Okay, I'm back. Let's get started with the bread and butter pickles. There are a few things that you're going to need, and this recipe makes two quarts. So for every two quarts of pickles that you want to do, and if you're new to my channel and haven't watched the Peach Jam series all the way through, I do touch on jars. I'm just going to quickly give you the logistics of the jar. This is a quart size pickle or jar that you would make your bread and butter and your dill pickles in. And this is a pint. So for every two of these, you're going to need to double this recipe because the ball recipe only uses two of these. And it's very, very easy to double this recipe. You just need to double depending on how much you want to can and how many pickles you have. I bought 10 pounds of pickles to make both dill pickles and bread and butter pickles. And if I did my, my brain worked well, we're gonna be doing four quarts of bread and butter pickles. And I'm going to actually do a little bit smaller quarts of my great grandmother's dill pickles. So, those are things to think about. You are gonna need at least the quart size jars. You can do this with pints, and you're gonna make a lot more pints than you are quarts, but just keep in mind, your pints are smaller, so you'll go through these a lot quicker. And there is no problem with the bread and butter pickles doing the pints. Now the dill pickles, because the dill pickles stay whole, they don't get sliced, I would use the quart size jars. Okay, before we get into the recipe, there are two options that you need to make a decision when you're making bread and butter pickles. One option is to enjoy them now. That means you're gonna follow the recipe as it's written, and then when you go to pack them, and what we mean by packing is when you fill the jars with your pickles and you pour the pickling solution on them, that's what I'm, I'm talking about. One is the enjoy now, and basically what that means is when you pour your liquid over your pickles in your jar, you're just going to let them cool down Quickly, you're not gonna you're not gonna need a canner to process them. You're going to just put them once they're cool in the refrigerator, and they will last up to three months in your refrigerator. So that's one recipe that you can do. The other recipe is doing a fresh preserve. And what do we mean by that? Well, now you're gonna use the canner. You're gonna process your jars according to what altitude you live at. I'm below 1,000 feet, so for me, the process jars are 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, you're going to do the same principle that you did for the jams, the peach, the sliced peaches in heavy in light syrup, and the blueberry jam. Is you're going to put them underneath the cover, leave them alone for 24 hours check them the following day, make sure all of your jars have sealed, and then you're gonna put, put them in your pantry. And they will last up to a year. Now, I'll be honest, I have things that have lasted a lot longer than a year. That just gives you a head up of how long they will last. And they will definitely take you through to the next pickling or the next growing season. So, those are the two options. I'm going to use the fresh preserve, which means I will be canning them and processing them in here so that we can enjoy them all winter long. Okay, for this recipe, and again, like I said, for every two quarts, you're going to need to double. So if you want to make more than just two quarts of pickles, you're going to have to keep doubling the recipe remembering that you're going to use two of these. So if you use six, you're going to triple, eight, you're going to quadruple, and so on and so so forth. And that's if you have a lot of pickles, because you're going to need 
a lot of pickles if you're going to go that much. We're going to do four, four jars, so we're just going to double the recipe right now. And this recipe for two quarts uses three and a half pounds of pickling cucumbers. And if you're new to pickles, I will show you in a few minutes. I'll grab them out of the refrigerator and show you what the pickling... Actually, I'll do that right now because they'd be a lot easier. I'm going to leave them in the refrigerator, however, because there are a few things we need to get done first. But if you have a farm stand or you're growing your own vegetable, that's a pickling cucumber. And it looks like a small baby cucumber. And that's what it is. It's, it's a pickle. And I'm going to bring you in close. It's very small. You can see how small it is. And that's what you're going to use for both the bread and butter pickles as well as your dill pickles. Now... Can you use a regular cucumber? Actually, you can. It's a little bit different. You cannot make dill pickles out of cucumbers. It usually does not work where you won't get the nice crunch that you do with, with the pickling cucumbers. Pick, um, Cucumbers themselves are a little bit different because they're, they're, they have a lot of water in them. They're actually considered a water vegetable where most of their weight is from the water that's on the inside of, of the cucumber. Hence why if you cut a cucumber and you forget about it in your refrigerator for a few days, you'll find that your cucumber has, has pretty much rot, rotted itself. Well, that's why. It's because the cucumber is mostly liquid. You're going to need two and a half cups of vinegar with at least a 5% acidity. Acidity. I think I pronounced that right. And most distilled vinegars will have 5% of the acid. And that's just the water to vinegar ratio. That's how they dilute. They'll dilute the vinegar to where you have at least 5% acid in your vinegar. You're going to need two and a half cups of sugar. And you're going to need a quarter cup of the ball bread and butter pickle mix. And I'll be right back. I'm going to grab that. Uh, oh, no way. Don't need to grab that. So you're going to need, you're going to need this. And like I said, if you're going to double this or triple it or quadruple it, you're definitely going to need one big, big bottle of the, uh, um, and this is called bread and butter pickle mix. Now this only is for bread and butter pickles. It's not for dill pickles. Dill pickles will use the pickling spice. And this is what a pickling spice uses. It'll also use dill, and we have fresh dill in the garden that we'll get later. So, before you start doing the recipe, you need to prepare your jars. And what do I mean by preparing the jars? Well, if you go back, like I said, if you go back to the jams and the jelly video, you will know how to process your jars and sterilize them. You need to sterilize your jars. And you can do this one of two ways. You can do it in the dishwasher, which usually is my preferred method. Now, these have not been sterilized. These are brand spanking new jars that have never been sterilized. And we need to sterilize them. So, how can we do that? Well, all you need to do is get a big pot. If you have a canning pot, that can handle multiple jars, that's the best way to do it. If you ha just have a big pot and can fit a quart size jar in, that will also do it. And you just need to boil the water for about 10 minutes. So let's get started with that. And once the jars are processed, do you need to leave them in the 
pot. Well, some people say no. I have never done that because usually by that time, I can control the environment in the house. As long as you don't have a lot of people, they're coming up and grabbing the jars. You could easily put them out, put a damp, warm towel over them, and they'll, they'll stay sterile until you get ready to use them. I've never had a problem doing that. Some people will say, no, you have to leave them alone in the canner with the water on simmer just to keep them hot until you're ready to use them. And then you face the risk because you also are going to need to dry them. You, some recipes will not, you do not want to have water in your jars when you're going to, to pickle something. So we're going to process the jars. I'll be right back once I get everything set up and we'll continue the recipe. Okay, I'm, I'm back. I'm getting my water hot for the canner. And I wanted to come back because this is going to be a little bit different than what we did when we did the jars for the jams and the jelly or the jam series that I did with the peach slices. Do you need to sterilize all of the lids, the, the bands and the jars? No, you just need to sterilize the jars. For the pickle recipe, because you're using a vinegar and it's an acid, you just need to wash these with soap and water. Some will say you actually do need to sterilize these because the lid. For this recipe, you don't need to sterilize these. You just need to put these in hot soapy water, wash them, dry them, and do that. Now, do you need to sterilize the bands? And this is going to be an argument. I have some people that are insistent that, yes, the bands also need to be sterilized. Well, if you look at the band, and this is not a sealed jar because it's a new jar. But I just took the band off, and you can see it's got the lid here. This does not come in contact with anything other than the, other than the lip of my jar. Sorry, my dogs are going nuts. They're thinking they're going out, but it's raining. And they're not going to go outside. My husband just came up. So, do you need to sterilize the bands? No. I just suggest washing them with soapy water and then thoroughly drying them because these can actually rust on you. And there's nothing like having a rust, a rust, rusting um, band. So, I'm going to move you guys for a quick second. You guys are going to come with me as I put my quart size jars down. He might have to go, honey. Now, how many jars should you process? Well, it depends on how much pickles you want. Since I'm doing quarts, I'm going to just do six. Six quart jars. My pints have already been sterile. Like. So I don't really need to re-sterilize those. And these also will make great gifts for people that like bread and butter pickles. You can use these on sandwiches. You can serve them with sandwiches on hamburgers. For a picnic, my husband's looking at me. I'm like, what else would you would would you serve bread and butter pickles with? I put them on my sandwiches. Yeah, he said he puts them on his sandwiches. When I have them. Yeah, when he has his sandwiches. In the olden days, and I should say the probably the 50s, the 60s, into the 70s. The 80s, they kind of fell off out of fashion. Maybe your grandparents did it. Usually when, when you have your lunch meal or your, your dinner meal, usually... The housewives would set when they set the table. They would pit, put a maybe a dish of, of bread and butter pickles on the table along with bread and butter, and you would have that with your meal. Like I said, that kind of fell out of fashion in the in the eighties because I don't remember my grandparents ever doing that as I was 
growing up. And I was not too little in the 70s, but I was young in the 70s and don't remember what was on the table back then. Sorry, my husband is yelling at the dog. So I'm just filling this up. I'm not going to fill it totally all the way like I would normally do to process these jars because I don't think you really need to. Come on. Come on. I'm actually going to... I'm going to pop this up and see how deep these these actually are going to get. Okay. And what you want to do, and I touched base on this, is if you're doing empty jars, just fill them about halfway so that they, they actually do sink to the bottom. Okay, I am going to have to put possibly more water in, in the canning stuff. And if you guys can, I know some of you guys, I know I had a viewer that said she can uh, strawberry rhubarb, which sounds amazing. I love me a good strawberry rhubarb pie. I've never actually made one. My grandparents used to make one, and I know you have to cook the rhubarb. before you uh, make the strawberry rhubarb pie, but that sounds absolutely amazing. What do you guys can if you're, if you guys are canners, what do you guys normally can? I'll be honest, for me, I do do jellies. I have done jellies in the past. I do, I have in the past done dill pickles. And I definitely do my tomatoes. I do both whole peeled tomatoes as well as I will actually turn the bushel of tomatoes that I'll I'll get, I'll turn those into sauce and then I'll can those. And we'll get into that like I said in September. So I'm just finishing these last couple of jars. And I'll show you guys kind of what they look like. Now my jars are floating a little bit, which signifies I need to put more water. Into them. And you want to make sure that you don't have to go two inches above them because theoretically... Nothing is in them. They're just plain jars. I'm just putting the last one in the camera. So you don't need to go... Do you need to go inches above them? No, you really don't. As long as they're covered and they're submerged, you don't need to go two inches. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Those are all the quart size jar. And like I said, we're only doing six jars because you don't really need to do a full dozen unless you have, plan on making that many pickles. And I need to save, save some. Well, actually, all six will make the pickles. I may do a little bit of the dill of the bread and butter and the pints, but we'll get to that in, in a minute. So I'm going to let these boil for 10 minutes. It's going to take about 15 minutes for them to come up to the boil. Then I'm going to process them for 10 minutes. So I will be back in a bit and we'll pick up where we left off. Okay, I'm back. I kind of lied. Things are just boiling. I am going to boil the lids for about a minute just to sterilize them a little bit. It's always a good idea to sterilize your lids. Now, keep in mind, and I know I've said this multiple times, and again, this is where I can be really long-winded. The lids, these are the considered the bands. So the flat part of the jar, and I wish I had one with me. Actually, I'm just going to grab oh, a little bit hot, but that hasn't boiled. These, remember, when you finish a jar of 
whatever you've canned. These things need to be thrown out. These are not reusable, but the jars and the bands are reusable. So that's just, if you're new to canning, keep those things in mind. You want to save your jars, you want to save your bands, but you're going to discard your lid once you finish whatever you've, you've canned and eaten the whole jar. Then go ahead and throw the lid out. Now I did have an oops moment and that happened a couple of years ago where I totally forgot I opened something. I can't remember if it was the jelly or something and I threw the lid out and then I was like, well, wait a second, I need the lid because I haven't finished what's in the jar. So make sure you finish the jar before you toss out the lid. But then once the jar is empty and doesn't have anything in it anymore, then throw the lid out and every year you need to replace that. So that was just my stupidity and my part. So I'm going to move you guys over here. Now, when do you want to start actually making your recipe? Well, you could go ahead and start doing it, but I would suggest waiting until your jars and your lids are sterile because you're going to want to start putting those in hot, in your hot pans. You're also going to need to process the syrup that you're going to going to use. And I would suggest if you want to crunch your <clears throat> bread and butter pickle or a dill pickle that you wait until everything has been sterilized. Put them back. What I usually do is I will put them in, in a package. And you don't really need to worry about the outside not staring, staying sterile. If the outside of the jar, like you could see these jars are touching the cardboard. Well, they're still sterile on the inside, although they have been exposed to the air in the house. But for a few minutes until you do the recipe, you can actually just put the jars back in their, their container until you're ready to use them. Or if you're worried about, you know, will they stay ster sterile, just line a cookie sheet, put your, your sterile jars on the cookie sheet and just cover them with a towel. They'll stay sterile long enough to get the recipe done. Now I know I've, we've talked about how long do you need to, to process the lids. One minute is long enough to sterilize your lids. So I'm just letting them boil. What you want to do for your lids, <clears throat> I'm going to take you guys over, not too close. My lids are in there. They're just boiling is after one minute, turn off the flame, move them over to a cool surface. You can leave them in the water and let them just slowly, naturally come down to a cooling process. And that actually does sterilize the lids. Now make sure when you bring the lids out of the water before you put them on the jars that you wipe them clean. And you're gonna want clean dish, dish towel to do that with. So like I said, I have a viewer that has done strawberry rhubarb. She was canning while she was watching my peach jam series. I'd be interested to know, do you guys can a lot of stuff and what things do you can? I would love to try to make my own homemade sauerkraut. And I might be able to do that this year with the cabbages that are growing in my garden. And I know I have a lot of viewers that do watch my gardening videos and we'll be doing more of the gardening videos including doing an update on the front garden on the flower garden which I actually yesterday it was it was not overly hot so I was able to not only mow my front and my backyard but I was also able to weed out my garden so I got a lot of the weeds done from the garden which made a big difference it looks much better up front so and we're also coming to the end of the season we've got about maybe maybe five more weeks of the growing season here in illinois 
If we're lucky, it'll be a little bit longer, but usually towards the last two weeks of September is usually when the growing season will come to an end because you could very well get your first frost around the 21st. So hopefully this year it doesn't do that, but with the weather that we've been getting with the extreme heat temperatures and the humidity and the ozone, who knows what, what this winter is going to have in store for us. They say it's going to be a mild winter, so I might be able to go into October, but usually September is about when I say, okay, my flowers are going to start to die off and stuff. So, while we're waiting for that, I'm going to stop the video right now. I will pick it up once my jars have boiled. And we'll be right back.